Hello again, my dear moths. Um, this is the Mrs. Brown's video. First, I will go over um, exactly what's in the kit, and then I will tell you a little bit more about the um, the sugar bags that I'm sending. When I first did Mrs. Brown, um, I wanted men's suiting. Uh, the wool, the different types of wool from the men's suits. You see that one? <clears throat> it's not thick wool. Um, I happened to uh, find um, our local Salvation Army and they were having a bag sale. And so um, I got as many men's suiting and, and wool plaids and things like that as I could. The idea was to um, use as many different shades as possible in the in the kits. Now, what I have here is the pieces. There's between ten and twelve pieces in a kit, depending. Some are smaller. Um, some are even a bit smaller than that, but they're good for um, the small pieces and the um, hearts and things like that. And of course they do have imperfections. So, so there's a mixture of them. This one, this one is the original from my Mrs. Brown. You can see it in the photos. This is what Mrs. Brown was made from. That is that material. So uh, you have between 10 and 12 pieces, which is probably enough to do two sets, or you can do one set and you can do the rest of the wool, the small pieces, because you will have small pieces left. Um, you can do them in the penny rug. So there's enough for a penny rug and for one set or perhaps two sets and maybe a tiny penny rug. Okay, so the pattern is on freezer paper. I have so many of these done. Uh, I just have a big wall of them done. Um, I'm not sure what I used them for when I did the original kit because I'm pretty sure that I uh, cut all of these out when I sent the kits. I don't remember, but so anyway, <clears throat> this is Mrs. Brown and her boy. The thing is, um, on Mrs. Brown, on this one, I don't have an extra. Uh, piece here for the apron. So the apron is a separate piece. You will need to trace that on something and uh, cut a small piece like that. Now, <clears throat> on the kitty, which is, oh, he's way down there. He's way down there. Um, you can most certainly take your two pieces of your kitty and sew them together as in <clears throat> what the original um, antique was. The original antique was that. It was just two pieces sewn together. The other thing you can do is you can cut a round circle and you can stuff your kitty and then just gather your round circle, stuff that, and stitch your kitty bottom onto it so that it, it stands up. Otherwise, it probably won't stand up. <clears throat> and I don't have the circle there, but it's pretty simple and straightforward. You just take a round piece, gather it, scrunch it, stuff it, and then put it underneath your kitty instead of sewing your, your kitty together on the bottom here. You would stuff it, and then you would put it on this piece of round um, gathered fabric from your kit 
so he has a little round thing to stand up on. The instructions are very scarce, but I will go over um, exactly how you put it together. It's pretty simple. The first thing I want to mention though, while we're doing the freezer paper, I would suggest um, that you, and where is my pieces? Um, this phrase, some of the wool phrase, you can see some of the wool phrase. I just cut these out. I ironed them on. And when I went to take them off, they really, really stuck. You can't tell there, but when I took them off, uh, some of the uh, wool frayed like this. You can see. Now, I suggest instead of doing that, when you cut these out, when you cut your pieces out, put it on a piece of wool iron it on something first so that you have something on there uh, instead of using it first on your on your dark wool put it on a towel put it on a uh, piece of cotton or something and just iron it a few times take it off iron it you do really need something on there so it doesn't stick so so tightly um, you can see from my pieces, you know, it really takes the wool fuzzies off. And um, actually, you should do that with, with any time that you're using freezer paper. It's so much easier. So, <clears throat> next is how do you put it together? Well, it's pretty simple. And I'm... As I say, I'm, I'm not good with instructions, not at all. Um, now that's Mrs. Brown's boy. And maybe if I put that out a little bit. <clears throat> there. This is Mrs. Brown and this is her boy. And Mrs. Brown has her, her dress and the boy has the pants. So you would cut, as on here, you have your pieces. You have these two, which are this one and this one. <clears throat> and then uh, you do the front, and that's his front. And these are those. And I gave him plaid pants. So what you would do, and then this is Mrs. Brown. This is her front because she doesn't have any feet. So there. Um, you would stitch around on the blanket stitch. And don't forget to do the little extra piece for her apron. But you would stick, uh, stitch around uh, with the thread I have I'm sending you thread for it. <clears throat> you have thread for it. Um, you would stitch around from her waist around. And then you do not stitch this to this. This is the flap that comes up. So then you would go around and do this. Now, if you find... Um, it's not uh, thick enough. Um, you can put another piece there to make it thicker. Uh, you also can, when you stitch around, just shove some little stuffing up in there to make her a little heavier. <clears throat> so this flap gets stitched around. This gets stitched around. They meet at the waist, and you do some stitches to stitch them together <clears throat> in here. You would stitch them together there uh, when you put your pocket on to, to tighten it up so that it, the flap just comes up. 
uh, inside the flap, remember to put a piece of your sugar bag in there. Just cut a little piece, however much you want. And um, that's to stick the pins in. So that's pretty, pretty simple. It's just stitch around, <clears throat> open the flap, stitch, and then stitch the flap, stitch the apron, and then put her eyes and her, um, she has a cross. Oops. She has a cross there. And the eyes and the cross are on the pattern. There they are. It's just remember before you close this up, you put your little thing for your needles in. And it's very much the same on her boy. Only her boy is in two pieces because I thought pants would be cute. Um, these two are stitched together. <clears throat> you put this underneath to hide the seam. And again, you, you can um, double this up if you find it's not um, thick enough. Double this up if it's not thick enough. But uh, it's pretty good. Um, uh, I didn't uh, double anything when I did them, I don't believe. Remember to put your little pin keep from this in here. This is stitched around. This is stitched around. This is put here. A little piece of fabric is in here for your pins. And then you clip it there. The same. I don't even have a picture of him. I don't think. I have a picture um, online, but I don't have a picture of him. And he lifts up for his pins. She lifts up. Uh, when you put the apron on, put it around, uh, stitch it to this part, to her, her skirt. But remember to leave a little opening on this side or on this side, whatever. And you can put your thimble in there and you can put your uh, needle threaders in there. So she has the extra pattern for her little waistcoat that's not on here. So remember that you need to do that and then put two knots there. Now, <clears throat> for the hair, she does have hair and I used black embroidery floss. You can do it. And just did some French knots there with a heavy thickness of floss, probably six strands, and did some some hair for her. So you can give her some hair too. <clears throat> as far as the kitty goes, pretty easy. Um, just two pieces, stitch them together, stuff it, and then close it. And then you put your, your little eyes on. So very, very simple. This is the scissors for your scissors. Um, for the little scissors that go in. Now for this one, <clears throat> I did use two pieces. Uh, because I found just one piece was, um, it was just a bit flimsy. I just wanted to give it a little extra bulk without um, putting anything on for stiffeners or anything like that. So you would sew these two pieces together. That's your back. And this is the heart for your front. And I have two pieces. So you would <clears throat> put this on. Now, what I found with this, and I don't know if it was something wrong with my pattern or whatever. Um, this is this, and this is this. But <clears throat> in the original, it's a little bit smaller, if you can see that just a little bit smaller. So I would just make that a little bit smaller so that your second batch of stitches 
um, I mean, that's quite a lot to, that's, that would be three or four layers. That's quite a lot to go through with your blanket stitch. So I would make that a bit smaller and just put it in a bit and have uh, a second blanket stitch there. Remember, when you put this on, you need to blanket stitch because this is going to be open. So you need to blanket stitch. And that's why I had two pieces because I found one piece was a little flimsy just to have the one piece there. You blanket stitch, done, put it on, and then blanket stitch it to the base all the way around and it's done. And <clears throat> you can um, put a little thing there like they have. You can put a little um, hanger if you want. Um, I didn't, I don't think. And now the other thing is, um, this um, doesn't look to be, um, this looks to be cotton thread. This is definitely embroidery thread. If you want to make it something fancy like that, this is a, a blanket stitch, but it's so close together. Very, very close, but it's thin thread too. And of course, if you want some buttons for the, for the kitty, um, I did put, I don't think I put, no, I, I put the same, um, there's my kitty sticking out. I put the same as I did with, with them for that. And you'll notice on mine, you see there's the two double, two, oh, the two double blanket stitches here. This part, uh, the inside heart, will need to be a bit smaller. And I don't know why I did that. I think I did that because it was the same on there. Right. But when I put it together, I put it together so that I have two sets of stitching. You go around this one. You go around the back first, then you start and do the heart part, then put it on and then blanket stitch it on for the second time. And I don't think, no, I don't have that, that um, 1892 or anything, but you can easily do that. You can put initials or whatever. So that's pretty much how to put Mrs. Brown together. Very important, take some sticky off, because if not, you're going to, to have some frays in your wool, and it's just going to be annoying, more so. Okay, so these are the types of wool, and I said it's between 10 and 12 pieces, different sizes, but I wanted to try to have an assortment. So that one. And there are fuzzies everywhere. <clears throat> this is a bluish color, but this is very thin. So this is another nice one, a tweed. And it's good weight. This has two sides. This is another plaid. And of course I, I dyed all of these too. These are not just the suits that I tore apart and, and, and cut up. Uh, of course I dyed them. So they all match, they all go together. That's another one. It's another plaid. That's a, well, would that be a hound's tooth? I'm not sure. <clears throat> but they're all so nice. This is a, this was from a coat. Good on both sides. Another one. And as I said, you know, every one is not going to be identical to this. I just, um, whatever I had left for this, I divided up and it's nine kits. So, 
whatever it came out to. Sometimes there are little small pieces in it too. So that's the between 10 and 12 thing. And you have string to do it. And the pennies are there. Now, I want to tell you a bit about the sugar bag. I used um, one of these bags on um, Minnie's Menagerie, the, the mat that I have for sale, the red one with the black animals. And I also used one on the back of my Halifax rug, which was um, the one that was um, photographed in early American life. Okay, so this is the story of the sugar bags. This is the only original that I have. <clears throat> and I left it as I found it. Uh, all of the other bags I washed out in order to use because I didn't want it so strong. Uh, but this one I'm keeping. So this is <clears throat> granulated sugar. It's a sugar bag. Um, oh, <laughs> ravel stitch from tab up there. Cut something off loose, close to bag. Separate the two ends and draw apart. They even have instructions on how to take the... Um, <clears throat> and this is what people would normally use as string. You see, it's together. For the life of me, I can't get it apart with those instructions, but that's nothing new, is it? I can't do instructions. So it's granulated sugar, royal <clears throat> Acadia sugar, guaranteed, pure cane sugar, and it is the... Acadia Sugar Refining Company Limited, Halifax. And this is the building. That is the Acadia Sugar Refinery. Before um, December 1917. Because in 1917, uh, when the, the warships were in, uh, there was our famous, terrible Halifax explosion. Um, two warships collided. Um, it destroyed the entire downtown harbor place. Uh, destroyed this. And um, it's interesting because my, um, you know, I live um, with, in my grandmother's house. I could not my, do my rugs unless I... Uh, had that experience because it was no running water, no bathrooms, uh, just a very old-fashioned way to live. No fridge, no electric stove, nothing. Uh, and her neighbor would come visit every day. And I was small. I was like five or six, something like that. And he would tell stories. One of the stories was he was in the city as a painter when the explosion occurred. And uh, he was thankfully uh, up higher. He wasn't down by the waterfront, but uh, he of course got hurt uh, with the flying glass and with everything. And he would tell stories about the explosion when he was there. And so <clears throat> many, many years after that, I went to a um, auction for an old house. And there was a huge um, copper boiler with the top on it. And I won the bid for the copper boiler. And so I took it home. Lo and behold, it was full of these sugar bags. There was probably two dozen of them in there. So then I, um, I researched them and I found out that they this bag is from before 1917, because in December, it would have been uh, destroyed and they would not have made any more. Uh, so it was before December 1917. 
probably a bit before that in order to get in that lady's copper, copper uh, boiler. So you are getting a piece of Nova Scotia history. <clears throat> You're not getting the, the, this as, as strong a color because it washed out. But <clears throat> I have divided a bag up into, I think, six pieces. Yeah, six pieces. Now I will try because um, that's really nice. And that, of course, you would put, there's a, there's a right and wrong, right? So you would put that. Um, most of them have writing on. They don't have, of course, the Halifax uh, name and that sort of thing. But they do have writing to know that they are a sugar bag. And this is really interesting because it's A.D. Fendel, uh, New Germany. And that would have been where the sugar bags uh, full of sugar were taken to this country store and the lady would have bought them in New Germany. They stamped on where they went for sale. And of course, this is the one where you, you have the instructions on the thread because everyone saved the thread from the sugar bags, of course, and the flower bags. You had the ball of string in every house. See, this one is doesn't have anything on. Um, this one has a bit on it, um, a number, but I don't know what that is. And this one, so there's two in every, every bag that doesn't have anything on. So I will try my best because I have to do two bags for nine kits. I will try my best for every kit to have something with it on. And, um, of course, when the explosion happened, there was relief coming from everywhere. And at that time, it was the, the trains that brought the relief. And there's a, a story about a, a gentleman, I forgot his name, but um, he lost his life by going in and messaging um, the other train stations to stop the trains from coming in because it, of course they would have been destroyed and a lot more people would have died. So um, now once you, um, oh, this way. If you decide to do your um, mat, you will have a lot to left over because you only need a couple little pieces for the flaps. Um, I want to talk a bit about thread. So these these um, plaids are perfect for a little rug. If you remember my plaid and lace rug, it was made from plaid pennies. And of course you can put them any way you want to. So, and I showed you in the other video what it looked like. <clears throat> and you have, the photo, if you want to do that layout, you have the photo. Now that has um, what I call a handkerchief hem around the outside, very thin cotton. And I believe that was on a piece of sugar bag. Uh, it looks very much like that. Um, if you would like to have a piece of binding, uh, leave a comment uh, when you purchase the kit and I'll because I know I have a lot of thin binding if you intend to do that with your with your kit just leave a note on the order now <clears throat> the thing with this mat is this everyone liked it they liked the look of it the thing is these aren't um plaids but the plaids trust me the plaids will be wonderful for that um it's very much like my plaid and lace um my other mat that i did uh 
this is a V stitch. And if anyone would like to know how to do the V stitch, there again, I can do a short video on it. Um, the centers are um, done from the center out blanket stitch, center out blanket stitch, and a French knot in the center. You can see that French knot. So <clears throat> it's not it's not the flower bag, it's not the binding, it's not the colors of the pennies. It is the stitch and the color of the thread that changes the look of this rug. It would look completely different if you used my string and just did a regular blanket stitch, completely different. With um, these um, fancy type stitches, the um, um, V stitch and where you go in and you have something fancy on your on your penny and then the same with the inside that's what makes this look the way it does it looks like a tiny little pin cushion there because of the french knot and then you're covering with threads of all different shades but still they go together now how do you get all different threads and have them go together so you probably have a lot of leftovers of thread. Let's say you have, see these are my leftovers. Let's say you have some blues and some greens and just little odds and ends of thread like that. But of course they're too light, right? That would be very ugly on there. So this is a very easy thing to do. First, <clears throat> if you're using um, embroidery floss, um, and I don't know about the other threads, but if you're using embroidery floss, make sure that you use something um, very different than the floss so you can see it because you're going to need to take that off after it's been dyed. Um, <clears throat> do not tie the knot very tight. That actually is too tight because it will uh, have a different shade there. So you want it very loose. You need to tie a knot. Take your uh, paper things off and tie a knot. And <clears throat> it doesn't have to be full skeins. You can have just some left over. Just um, take your fingers, go like this, tie it off. Just as long as the threads are open, uh, good and not tight where they are um, tied. Then <clears throat> get an old pickle jar. Now I'm going to put something there because you know as things go I may get something on these which I wouldn't want to have happen. <clears throat> Where can I find something? <clears throat> Let's be very safe. <laughs> there. So use a pickle jar, about that size. Um, you can use um, a pot that you cook in. For this what you would do is there are eight tea bags in there and they're tea bags not loose tea uh, the first thing you would do is you would take eight tea bags and about this much water you would put it in a pot and as i said this the, the tea um you will need a tablespoon of salt and you will need a quarter cup of vinegar so you put your eight tea bags in the in a pot quarter uh, cup of vinegar and a teaspoon of salt. Now, if at all possible, use um, pickling salt. Uh, the table salt, the iodized table salt, doesn't seem to work as well. But if you don't have it, use regular table salt or sea salt or whatever. It's just my experience has been 
that it doesn't work as good. The reason you're using tea, tea um, is a natural um, dye uh, and it's made from tannins. It has tannins in it. And of course, we all remember years ago when we tea dye the dolls and the primitive things and all of that, and you'd leave it on and you'd even put it in the oven and do that. Well, <clears throat> the tannins, uh, as far as cottons and wool, um, they are uh, supposed to be a mordant. Um, the tannins um, make a nice stain. It's a good, um, it, it won't, it doesn't fade readily like most of the natural dyes do if you don't set them. Now, if you put the salt and the vinegar in, that helps to set the dye. So what I did is I, I put my eight tea bags, I measured the water, a uh, heaping tablespoon of salt and a quarter cup of vinegar all together. And I put it on the stove and I, um, I would say I boiled it. Uh, there was bubbles coming up. It's not the same as when you're dyeing wool and you don't want bubbles after the wool is in. You don't have anything in the pot but food grade things, right? It's vinegar, salt, and, and tea. So um, you can um, boil it, but be very, very careful that you do not break those tea bags because that's what I did. What a mess. Anyway, <clears throat> you boil it um, for a while. Make sure that the, the tea is out of it. Then um, you transfer it to a jar. <clears throat> oh my. <clears throat> and you would <clears throat> take your pieces of of um, floss or threads, small pieces left from um, from um, different projects, things like that. Now, <clears throat> it is much better, much, much better if you have a designated dye pot that you can keep it in the pot and put your threads in and then let it um, let it simmer for a bit in the heat. The heat uh, does um, help with the putting it, uh, the dye in, in your cottons, <clears throat> but you cannot do that if you do not have a pot just for dye. With this, <clears throat> it's food grade, you just transfer it here. And then this will work, but it won't make as strong a dye as if you would have a, a designated pot, put it on the stove and um, keep it heated for about an hour or something like that. And then you just let it sit. So I have some in here, see? <clears throat> and they will stain. Now, the tea bags are in there too. There's eight tea bags in here. <clears throat> just leave it in, put them in dry like that. And it should be hot when you put it in, really. <clears throat> put them in. Put them in dry. Doesn't matter. And then you just leave it go. Leave it sit in there and let it go until even a week, days, whatever. Just put it Put it in the a cool spot. If you want a cool spot right now, you don't have to put it in your fridge or anything because I'm sure, like if you put it in a basement or somewhere, it's going to be cold somewhere. Uh, other than that, like it, in the summertime, put it in the fridge. Just keep keep putting your, your odds and ends of, of string in there and then that will dye it. What you need to do is after you take it out, you need to wash um, the tea out with um, with with water um, in your kitchen sink in a bowl, whatever, and then you just let them dry. And that's how you get. <clears throat> well, that was good. I didn't spill anything. That's how you get 
<clears throat> all of these types of colors that they blend together. Uh, tea, uh, think of tea as a stain. Uh, just like ketchup, if you have a ketchup stain on a white t-shirt, okay, it you can throw it in the wash and it will come out, but you're going to see that stain because it's um, a natural dye. And <clears throat> in order to get that stain out, you would need to um, put some kind of a stain remover on it. It's the same thing with the threads and dyeing. You're leaving it in the tea, uh, the salt, and the vinegar. Uh, the salt and the vinegar will help keep the dye in the in the fabric or the cottons or whatever, and it doesn't wash out. But <clears throat> you're, they're all blending together. They're just a bit darker, and uh, the longer you leave them in there, uh, in the fridge or a cold place or whatever, uh, the, the stronger the dye is going to be, of course. And um, best case scenario is if you have a pot just for dyeing, uh, that heat for about an hour just to keep it hot, not boiling. You do not see bubbles. It's just steam. Um, that really helps put set the dye too. But if you don't have that, this is just fine. It'll work the same way. It's just that you need to keep your string in your pickle jar um, a lot longer for it to work. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> when you do this, <clears throat> be very careful of certain colors. I have really never had red that with heat, it doesn't, um, the dye doesn't come out. Now, there are some other colors. Sometimes it's a blue. Um, greens, very rarely. Um, mostly it's red and sometimes a, a type of blue that um, will come out. The way you test that, <clears throat> I would I would consider red to bleed no matter what. I, I wouldn't even test it anymore. But if you want to do a green or something like that, green is not as, um, <clears throat> it, it doesn't often do it. It's just mostly reds. And the same with wool. Uh, what you do is you just put, uh, take a piece of your thread, uh, boil a kettle of water, put it in a, a paper cup or a plastic cup, or something <clears throat> and watch from the hot water the steaming hot kettle water watch if the if the water turns red if it does <clears throat> then you know that this is going to bleed it won't bleed very much and you can really not worry too much about that uh, if you're not using your designated pot and putting the thread in along with your tea bags and everything and and letting that simmer for an hour on the stove. <clears throat> if you're just using uh, the pot, putting it in your pickle jar, I'd say the reds would be quite fine. They're not going to be that much of a problem. It's just, they're just going to turn darker. The dye uh, isn't going to come out that much. But <clears throat> if you do have reds and they bleed use them to your advantage um go to your color wheel um just go in google and do a color wheel and say <clears throat> let's say you have reds and then you have some greens or you have some blues or you have some yellow or something else um, use <clears throat> the dye from the red to make different colors rather than using an acid dye. The dye that comes out of this um, will go in your water and you'll get different shades than if you normally would just have the tea. So that's about it, I think. What did I miss? <clears throat> now, as I said, the instructions are, um, okay, first, if, you decide you want to do the mat, you're going to do the mat and you need that stitch shown to you, you let me know. <clears throat> if you 
are going to do this mat and you want a thin binding, you put it in with a comment in your order. Remember that when you do the pattern, it is um, two sides here. This little heart inside, wait, this little heart inside for your scissors needs to be a bit smaller than on the uh, freezer paper pattern. And this is not an extra piece. This you'll need to draw yourself from the freezer paper and it's there. You just need to cut a piece extra. Remember not to, not to stitch it on the sides because that's where you, you put your, your um, thimble and your um, needle threaders. And um, these are just knots there. Remember to stop them there and do twice around. The flop has to be done and then the back has to be done. Uh, remember the French knots um, use six strands of black, which I, I haven't included that, but I could though because I have it. Um, Remember about the kitty, um, if you want the kitty to stand, and I put a little tail on the kitty too. <clears throat> uh, if you want the kitty to stand, you need to make a circle, gather it, stuff it, and put it underneath. If you just want the kitty like that, you can um, just put the two pieces together. And uh, there is Mrs. Brown's boy. Remember, there's two of those. There is enough, um, uh, I'm quite sure there's enough to do two of these sets, if you want to do two sets, or you can do the one set, and then you have um, the Nova Scotia history. You have this, which is large enough to make um, a nice penny rug with your, um, with your leftover scrap. So I think that is it. Mm. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. So, um, as I said, I have nine kits of this. <clears throat> Remember, very important, take some of that sticky off your freezer paper. Um, you have the aged dyed thread to do it, which is going to be really nice. Um, 10 to 12 pieces. Um, that's about it that I'm going to give you for instructions because I really, I don't know <clears throat> any other way to do it. But um, remember if you find these, <clears throat> these, some of the pieces, if you find them too thin, uh, do a double piece or choose, um, Maybe choose <clears throat> that for this and then put a heavier piece on for his, because the flaps are coming up, remember? Flaps come up on the boy. Flap comes up on Mrs. Brown, and this is where you put your needles, in this little piece of um, the sugar bag. So I believe that's it. Uh, now I'm going in and um, list them, hopefully. Hopefully everything works with this video because last night it was absolutely ridiculous. Terrible. Okay, <clears throat> that is it. Um, I'm on my way to list now, um, but I'm not fast. So probably when you're watching this video, most of it will be listed. Uh, do remember everything, shipping, shipping is included. Um, this is a kitty that goes in with um, the, um, the cutouts. Uh, I forgot to put them in. Um, shipping is generally, you generally take eight to $10 off for shipping. Um, so ships USPS, uh, tracking and insurance. And I believe that's it. I hope you enjoy Mrs. Brown and her boys. 
<clears throat> you do know they were um, originally from the Mrs. Brown episodes on the UK TV. And um, their um, mammy is a mother. That's the name you give. They, they say Mrs. Brown, they say Mammy, and that sort of thing, so. <clears throat> it's sometimes you shouldn't say that now. But that's where it comes from. Okay, and I think that is it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, just put them on the moths or on the uh, video. And I hope you enjoy. Happy stitching.